Thank you. I'm going to uh, just introduce Linda Bellos, who probably needs <laughs> no introduction. No introduction, but I'm so going to do it anyway. So, <laughs> so uh, Linda's been an activist. Do you want me to not do? No, I'll say it. You say yeah. it. You say it. You tell your story. <laughs> um, let, me, let me stand. Um, I'm, I'm, I feel very moved by what you said and the emotion. It's very real. I don't have the same experience. I've been called Sir. Uh, I was called Sir when I was eight months pregnant. I'm not joking. I'm really serious. Um, I'm Sir all the time. And my grandson has got more facial hair than I have. <laughs> this gender shit is so appalling. It's completely backwards. And the irony is that if you talk about... I hadn't seen in, the, in, in Britain many of the trans... I'm going to say women. I'm going to try to be respectful. Trans women who are of African origin. I haven't seen many. I know in America, and you can see in one sense why American m black men would seek to reduce the possibility of being murdered by a police officer by walking down the street. I can well understand how dare so-called feminists here, or not feminists actually, that these trans women argue that because some trans men in, trans women in America are black, that's their, well that would justify them applying the same categories. I don't any longer accept the notions of races. I don't, th I part them as a human race, but when people talk about bl black races, African races, it just happens to be the case that the creation of notions of race apply exactly at the same time as gender, power-based relationships between human beings on which whole societies are created. So if I sound a bit passionate about what's happened about race, because I have been angry for a long time about the nature of racism, the rubbish that he said, the appalling things that have been done to African people, and then when we look at what is being done to women as a category, it is not a million miles, except that love comes into it. That's the only real difference. I don't think that enslaved Africans were intended to love slave owners, though many women were raped, as we know. The, the politics of gender is utterly backwards. And I really do think, and those of us, there are a few of us who are of African origin here, we need to be showing the mirror to them say, well, would you, would you suggest that we, get, we call ourselves not black, but non-white? Because it, that's, it seems to me the equivalent that black has actually to do with the sun. It's to do with melanin. We have this in our hair and on our skin so that in the parts of the world in which, around the equator, um, lots of us wouldn't get the kind of Kent cancers that lots of white people seem to be getting now because of the sun. And isn't it uh, some of the white men who've come up with these brilliant ideas about how we destroy this planet? They're going to find that um, people, some of us are at an advantage in terms of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually pretty scary, isn't it? when we look at what is happening to this world. I'm talking about the environment, what's happening about peoples in this world. And at the same time, we're hearing an ideology that justifies why women, born women, capable of having children, though many of us choose not to. I'm not one of them. I've got big children. I've got a grandson who's that tall and a granddaughter who's 22. Um, I love having children and I'm awfully unthem, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I just don't do that thing. And I, I, Why will these trans women insist on bringing into 
our politics the oppressions of half the world. Because they're making politics out of oppression and giving it a fancy name. Because that, that's what they're doing it. They do, uh, and I, I, I'm going to call myself um, cis as often as I'm going to use the word nigger. I hate the word. I hate both of them. It's offensive, which is an understatement. And I love understatements. It's a real, it's a real understatement to say that actually the only significant difference between men and women is that men can impregnate women and women in the main, not all women, but many of us are capable of having babies and growing children in our bodies. That's all. What is the logic of saying that there are significant differences between the species of humans, that one is capable of producing the seed and another of receiving the seed and growing a baby. What makes the significant difference? And what we've had until, um, what, uh, 20, 30 years ago, has been men saying, lots of men saying, that because we are women, we can't drive a car. Um, Saudi Arabia, it's just... We have to, what, what, what role the penis plays in, uh, in, in, in driving a car, I have yet to identify. <laughs> it steers it, the car when you're opening your crisps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. It's utterly... I mean, and the, and these, are, these are people who claim to have more logical reasoning. What a pile of bollocks. And I use that word deliberately. <laughs> I'm not anti-men, I am anti-masculinity, and I'm anti-femininity. These are socially created categories that justify inequality. And many of us in this room, in fact all of us in this room, are here because we are critical of these forms of oppression. We need to think about some creative ways of making the world a better place. I'm inclined to say that I want to see the renewal of a women's liberation movement. Yeah. And, and I want to see some men organising some politics, whatever they call it, and no, they're not to be a branch of the Women's Liberation Movement. They should be separate. Some of us, I for one, will happily work with, with some men, but they, there should not be, at this stage, a, 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 a movement in which men and women are working together because the experience, the lived experience of most women is such that lots of women won't say anything, won't, won't do the things that they need to do, and consciousness raising, and most women have, don't even know what a bloody hell consciousness raising is. I've written an essay in my memoirs, which I, by the way, I haven't got a publisher for, but I've written about a process called consciousness raising because it is still a revolutionary tool, and chaps ought to do it too. <laughs> but not necessarily. But some of them, they, they, yes, they can be mixed groups, but exploring with each other the lived experience of oppressions that apply and are, uh, uh, are imposed on us because we are women. And I don't, I, what, you know, what is the logic of this? If you don't have a dick, which is, I mean, that's it. If you don't have a dick, you are a second-class human being. In fact, you're not really a human being. How could there be these levels of rape and murder? How could there be murder of other human beings because we're women? And if I sound angry, I am absolutely bloody furious. We should be furious. And those people who were previously male now want to be female. I think, let them as long as what they don't do is allow a, war, a, 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 a law 
to change. I, I don't have a problem if uh, we, we've got the Gender Recognition Act, if it needs to be strengthened, but it has to, it, it cannot include and impinge upon us without us having a say. It does matter. Otherwise, what, what, what is happening, it seems to me, is that some people who are men or male want to dictate for the rest of us. If we, if we put up with it, I think we're going to do ourselves and our children, boys and girls, a huge disservice. So we have to do something now. And I do think that having some basis of working out what we're for, not merely what we're against. Because the thing about, the thing about our, our, our work that we must do against the changes that the government... Apply, uh, mind you, I mean, they don't actually look like they're going to last very long, do they? <laughs> <laughs> However, the issues still are important because some people are seeking to silence us. It has the absolutely opposite effect on me. And what's more, I'm, I'm quoted as saying about, about um, fighting, but it wasn't in general, it was fighting the people who had fought um, Maria. But my father did teach my brother and I to fight because in the 1950s, when I was a small child, the racism was so obvious, intense, that had I not been able to use my fists, I and my brother, I'm older than my brother, would have been beaten and probably murdered. But um, we, we learned to fight. Bloody useful. Because <laughs> what I can do, take my glasses off, I can't see a bloody thing, but the, take my glasses off, step forward, and I will fight. And most people walk away. I haven't had to do it but I am capable of doing it, should I need to. And I think many of us actually need to own our own power. I'm not talking about being violent. I'm merely saying that we should be capable of responding to those who physically threaten us. Some of us won't be able to do it. Others of us will, for ourselves and for others. I wouldn't want to make a politics out of this. I'm simply being pragmatic about how we get to where we need to be. And where we need to be is conscious of the world we want to live in. And we are being oppressed, attacked, silenced. We're all here this evening because we're not going to put up with it, are we? No. There were other things we could have been doing this evening. We're not going to put up with it. We need to spread the word about what we're for, not simply what we're against. I want to see the end of oppression about, of people because of their, whether it's their religion, whether it's their, do I want to use the word gender? No, sex. <coughs> because of the colour of their skin, because of their disability, all of these things men have created, and I have to say this, because for so often, so long, we didn't even have the bloody vote. So don't start blaming us now for the things that you did over the last centuries. Some chaps have thought that you measure your, your worth for how high you piss up the wall. I'm, I'm not joking. Is there any men here who have seen it happen? Who I certainly am aware that's pissing up the wall is some kind of, uh, you know, macho. Well, I think we, we girls... You're not asking all... for a contest later. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did try, but I was very nifty. Oh, but it didn't work. It didn't work. So, anyway. No, I'll give it a good go. Uh, <laughs> it's what we need to be is what we're for. And surely, even I, when I think about some of the women's liberation movement that I remember, if we... Goodness me, the arguments. I was a, what we were then called a revolutionary feminist, we're now called radical feminists, but the arguments that we had with the socialist feminists. And I remember, um, I, and I hear that Mary McIntosh or somebody wrote a book, no, Elizabeth Wilson wrote a book, an, an incident in which I allegedly, she didn't put my name, but I'm told that it was me who did have words with the socialist feminists. But it's a, uh, it was me, Sheila Jeffries, who else was there? It was something, at the university... It, 
it was an event anyway, and we had words. Uh, and we, there weren't many of us, but we were so angry and so critical of their critique, and their critique has included this gender stuff. I hope they've changed their mind. I won't hold my breath on it, but I hope they've changed their mind. But any woman should be free to be in a movement in which we are seeking truth, inclusion. We don't all have to agree on everything. But let us not be oppressed because of being female, or because of our colour, or our religion, or our disability, or all of the divisions that men have created, we need to uncreate, create a world in which every human being is of equal value. And it's, it's difficult, but that has to include the people we don't like, doesn't it? We don't, we don't kill them, hopefully we'll persuade them, but the rest of us, the majority of us, need to build the politics about what we're for. And the new gender recognition proposals are absolutely the opposite of a world in which I want to live. And I, one of the things I am minded to do now is to see a copy. I want to see, and I, everyone actually should be writing to the relevant ministry, uh, to see a copy of the equality impact assessment that has been done on this issue. Because I don't think they don't want one. And I think they ought to. If they don't consider, then we can have we can have legal we can make legal challenges to them. If they have not considered what the implications will be for women, then I think that um, we might have elections coming up soon. We might challenge people, and I think we get a lot of women who would <coughs> support us. So I think we've, there's different ways in which leverage. I prefer the democratic ones as opposed to merely hitting them. <laughs> Much as I'm... Anyway, no, I won't say that. Uh, no, I do, I do feel sometimes very a bit cross, uh, but I'm, I don't think that actually violence is a solution. It has been used too much on women, and I'm not convinced that it's a, a good tactic. But learning how to defend ourselves is another matter, and I'm serious about being able to, be, to walk free, freely in any place and not be fearful of what might happen to us. So I don't think I want to say much more. I've, um, I've uh, expressed quite a bit of uh, crossness and um, my sometimes lapses of memory, which is happening recently, didn't happen now. Thank you. Thank you.